You start off as a baby, struggling to understand reality. With each experience, you perfect and learn a new mental construct, one building on the last. You perfect creativity, social interaction, logic, and reasoning skills. You work hard at your studies and feel great doing so. Then something happens at a certain point. All of these things you worked hard for and felt like you accomplished and would make your life better suddenly feel meaningless. Your peers begin acting differently and many times cruelly. You suddenly react differently to girls or boys. Your heart beats fast and you don't know what to say around them or you can't help but stare at them. You're no longer controlled by logic and reason. It exists, but it's much harder to focus on compared with your emotions and instincts, and they tend to shout over your ability to reason. Parts of your brain have in fact shut down. Welcome to the world of being a teen. Not an adult, but not a child. A limbo of an emotional roller coaster. Puberty is a period of your life when you begin to reach sexual maturity, averaging around 12 to 13 years old. During that time period, your brain begins to turn on neurological chemicals called hormones that will get your body ready to begin to reproduce and find a mate. Estrogen and testosterone are the most well-known of these hormones. Both of these trigger functions that make you more masculine or feminine. They are extremely stressful on your brain because they're trying to force a quick change in your body over a relatively short period of time. Biological functions take priority over mental functions, so parts of the brain shut down to conserve energy. These hormones are at the highest they will ever be in your life. At a point at around 18 to 26, your brain will stabilize, and you will have figured out how to control these emotions you have, instead of them controlling you. As a teen, you become more feral, more primal, and more tribal. What is socially acceptable and who is more attractive tends to be what is important, even if you make the claim that you really only care about what's inside that counts. Your young brain will often make you think that someone who is more attractive is more beautiful than they actually are on the inside. Hormone levels that each of us have vary based on our genetics and environment. Because of this, the level of masculine and feminine development varies. I myself did not begin to hit my full level of testosterone until I was about 15. Testosterone causes muscles to build faster, including ones in your vocal cords, which makes them thicker, producing a deeper voice. My voice is not that deep compared to other men. I also look very young for my age. I'm 31, but people think I'm in my early 20s. Now this is great. I will continue to look younger than I am throughout my life. If I was still dating, the older I would get, the more this would be an advantage for carrying on my genes. Studies have shown that the earlier and more pronounced puberty comes on, the shorter the average lifespan of that person is, especially in terms of testosterone. Testosterone is especially harsh on the body, which is why women tend to outlive men on average. So long term, having low testosterone is great. In the teens, though, it's not so wonderful. Straight girls are all attracted to the most testosterone-filled men possible. Straight men are attracted to the most estrogen-filled girls possible. Low hormone and slow development teens are many times sidelined and sometimes are treated as second-class citizens. And unless they're lucky enough to be clear-headed, they too are actually attracted to the most hormone-filled even though they will probably have little chance with them. The hierarchy of jealousy and social acceptance includes bullying, backstabbing, gossip, and isolation to maintain this pack mentality and fight your way to the top or maintain your place in the pecking order. The American public school system is rife with this. Many schools understand teenage behavior and take steps to minimize the effects of teen tribalism. Many, especially in poor areas, do not because of limited funding. In ancient times, depending on the region, but especially in agrarian societies, the average lifespan was around 40. This means that a fairly large percentage of the tribe or village was made up of teens. Back then, you were either a child or an adult, and you began reproducing around 12. Much of the policy of the ancient world was made by teenagers. Anyone lucky to survive beyond 40 was considered wise. You were the library of the tribe, and much of the time people deferred to your oral recollection, often through blind faith, even if you were completely wrong on an issue. The death of an elder was like the library burning down. This is why it took us as a young population millennia to discover the ideas of science. Earlier puberty and especially earlier childbirth leads to average shorter lifespans as the stress of pregnancy is very harsh on a mother, 
We have increased the average age of initial pregnancy by quite a few years, and thanks to birth control, we can give the body a break between children and allow her body to recover. The delay in the age of puberty is pointing also to the evolutionary advancement of Homo sapiens sapiens. Bone and teeth x-ray analysis shows Homo erectus reaching puberty around the age of seven. Our cousin, Homo sapien neanderthalus, had a lot in common with us. The variations we are finding out were, while noticeably different genetically, were about as different as the breed of dogs. Neanderthals had even larger brains on average than humans, but they had one of potentially several limiting factors that reduced some of their edge over us. X-ray analysis of the teeth of Neanderthals point to a difference between us being that they reach puberty around the age of eight years old. This means they had much less time to develop their brains in terms of creativity and mental constructs before they had to have the complex hormones hit their brain, tuning out logic. Their elderly also lived a bit shorter because they reached puberty earlier, preventing their wisdom from allowing complex groups. Our ancestors lived in groups of up to 50. Neanderthals were only found in groups with a max of 20. This provided less variety and creativity. Neanderthals lived in the cold Eurasian continent. This required them to be tough to survive. Humans lived in the deserts of East Africa during the Ice Age, and only the people with creativity, longer life, and foresight were able to survive. Some small branch of a highly varied hominid in Africa hit puberty later than the rest with perhaps other attributes, and when the Ice Age hit, they were the only ones to survive. The current us versus them group to attack is homosexuals, largely due to religious fundamentalism. Not only have actual gays been bullied into suicide lately, but straight kids are being accused of being gay and bullied to suicide, and some pastors and political leaders are encouraging this hatred. To you, the bully, the abused, or depressed, both gay and straight, I will tell you this. It gets better. High school is nothing but an unfortunate hiccup in the long life you will hopefully lead. You have limited choices and limited voices right now. You will get out of high school and have choices of your own to make. When you graduate, you will get out into higher society where your worth is measured more on your work and less superficial things like appearance or your ability to bully others. It will take you a few years to get over high school and find your feet, but once you do, you will be glad you did. Studies show that if you haven't committed suicide by the age of 23, you probably won't by that point. Keep at it. It gets better and much more bearable and even enjoyable. Anyone who tells you that high school is the best years of your life were either lucky enough to be oblivious to the bullying or they were up in the hierarchy themselves doing the bullying and currently their life is kind of crappy. The best years of my life were actually college, where I learned to be social and found more like-minded people, and most of the time I didn't have to be around people who were jerks. I got to form my own opinions, I got over my depression, and made my own mistakes. The future may look bleak to you now, but there are a wider variety of opportunities after high school. It may be hard, it may be painful, but you can get through it. You will find accepting friends and people who care, even if for now you're surrounded by bigots and people who can't relate. I wish you the best. Never give up.